I stand on the shoulders of many, many people. I've been taught by the best in this country, spiritually, academically, as well as in the streets. In other words, I've been there and I've done that. And uh, if I can't claim it, I can sure name it. I've been in Oakland, California all of my life. And right now I'm looking at my hometown going to hell in a handbasket. And this is probably the reason why I'm an ordained minister. I've been ordained in three different Christian denominations. And today, I'm a non-denominational minister of our Lord Jesus Christ. The only thing I'm going to say about that at this time is that Personally, I felt denominations brought about confusion. And I'm trained to believe Satan is the author of all confusion. Now, in 2014, the Lord blessed me with 63 hours per week lease access programming for my ministry. And it's been hard for me to keep those hours uh, since I've gotten them back in 2014. Many people, somehow because I've been in Oakland all my life, many people believe that I'm a public access. And because they know me, they always want to... Uh, bring out whatever it is that they want to bring out on television. But I'm not public access. Even though you may see things that are very important to the public aired during my access time. And in most cases, yes, it is uh, public people that come in uh, that want to express something that's going on in the public. But I'm not public access, I'm not educational access, I'm not governmental access, but I do allow certain things to be covered. This is a commercial station and I have to pay for every minute that's aired. Therefore, I have to sell those minutes. And many individuals don't, don't understand that, even though I allow them access to express something that's in their heart. But I'm not a public access. Now, I'm not going to talk any further on uh, the ministry and what I'm doing for television and, and ministry and what I have uh, planned on doing. But today I really want to talk more about uh, my academic teachings. And in particular, one academic teacher. Her name is Dr. Cecilia Arrington. And for those of you that have met her, you will never forget her. Her students are allowed to call her Cece. Maybe I should start from the beginning. The first class that I took from Dr. Cecilia Arrington. Well, anyway... It was at Merritt College a long time ago. I believe that was the latter 60s. And uh, 
Mm. She was teaching Afro-American history. Now, for those of you that don't know, Mary College was the first college in this country to include Afro-American studies in their regular curriculum. Uh, and pretty much all of our classes were three units and our counterparts were five units and we had to fight to get those five uh, up to five units. But anyway, she was the African or uh, Afro-American uh, instructor at Merritt College. And uh, I'll never forget this as long as I live. But anyway... It was raining, and her class was in the bungalows. And uh, she had a class. It was people all over the place trying to take these classes. Well, anyway, she was late. And uh, I don't know how late she was. It didn't matter. I, was, I wanted the class. Oh, that's what I told myself then. And I stood out there in that rain. Now, one of my friends, I've known him uh, most of my life, went to junior high school and stuff with him. Well, anyway, he left to go get some coffee because, you know, it had stopped raining a little bit. So he said, I'm going to run over there, you know, get some coffee. Well, anyway, when he got back, Dr. Arrington had already come to class and she was in the middle of roll calling. And she was going alphabetically. And my friend's name, I was told he was no longer with us. I don't know. I'm going to verify that. But anyway, his name was Willie Bell. I, I knew the Bell family quite well. And uh, when he came into class, he had his coffee in his hand. And I'm pretty sure he was listening to what she was saying as he was going to a, a, a empty desk. And uh, before he set his coffee down good, he stopped and he said, or asked, did you call my name? And what did he do that for? Dr. Arrington responded, did I call your name? If you were here, you would have known if I called your name. And what did Willie say this for? He said, but I was here, but you weren't here. I just went to get some coffee. He went to explain the whole thing. She let him go on and do his speech, and then she looked at it and said, you're supposed to be here when I get here. I got mine. I'm here to teach you to get yours. I knew then that this teacher was not a joke okay not a joke at all so I just made up my mind then <clears throat> what I was gonna do was just sit there because this is for you know and just be totally quiet and see what was going on and see I was carrying 15 units and uh in order for you to receive your loans and grants and things, uh, you had to be carrying what they considered a full load at that time is 12 units. So I sat there in the class. I listened to everything. And she gave us the syllabus and told us what her expectations were. And she passed out stuff and Looked like every piece of paper she gave me, my my mouth got wider. Eyes too. Well, anyway, I had made up my mind that I was going to drop this class, you know. I did the math. I had 15 units. This was 3 units. If I don't take the 3 units, it's 12 units. I'll still have enough units. You know, to get the loans and grants and all of that stuff. So now, I had to explain this to my mother. By the way, I moved back home with my mother 
with two children and uh, I was what 22 then I believe I just had a 21st birthday not that long ago well anyway I had two children I moved home with my mother and my mother was one of those kind of people I brought you here I'll take you out so if you're gonna be living in her household you was gonna either be going to school and our work so uh, I chose school and of course she wanted to see report cards class schedules everything she's crazy well anyway uh, I came home I figured I'm gonna explain to her why I'm gonna have to drop this three unit class of Afro-American history okay and I figured I had you know I'd be able to explain this to her uh, I don't know why I thought my mother would go for that well anyway I showed her all the class schedule and everything told her why you know I told this woman is crazy she got 93 million trillion books on this book list and uh Although she didn't make these mandatory, even the book list she gave us that was mandatory was a whole bunch. She was crazy. So, that's what I said to my mama. And I hand her all the stuff, you know, her book list and everything. And she was looking at it. I figured show, but oh, when she was doing this, she understood what I was talking about. Mm, I don't know why I did that. Well, anyway, she looked back down at my class schedule, and she said, "You can drop all of these classes, but you have to take this one." And of course, it was the class that I was trying to get out of. Now, I don't know why I thought, I, my mother raised me, I don't even know why I thought that was going to work. Here I am between two strong African American crazy females from down south that's the best I can do it. Okay, my mama and my college instructor. I, you know, I don't know why I even thought that I should even bring that up. I should have known that she was going to tell me or say something like that. I thought I was going to get away with something again, I thought. But see, my mother had already talked a lot about how they had to walk to school and see the school bus pass by with the with the white kids in it and how they had to struggle to even try to learn anything and she had already sent me through all that and I should have known I should have known when it came to education she definitely wasn't going to agree with what I said so I ended up taking all of the classes. I kept them all and I maintained a, what was that, a 3.43 grade point average in the midst of it. But uh, all I have to say is that you're going to have to know about your history in order to understand your present and plan your future. And... Uh, Thank you, Mama. I love you. Thank you, Dr. Cecilia Arrington. I love you. Because, but not you two. Lord knows what I'd have been into. Two babies and still young. But anyway, I would like to give you an act, you know, an example, Dr. Arrington, of my teachings from you. I've uh, pretty much produced a little small video 
that I plan on putting on social media but I have not. I've only shown this video during my television hours and uh, I'm dedicating it to you and my mother because if it was not for you two I, I wouldn't be where I am now as far as African or African American history is concerned. Um, so thank you both. I love you both. But anyway, I'm going to show this video. And then after I show it, I'm going to come back and talk just a little bit more. Say goodbye with this first section. Be right back.